Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 24. Look what King Jesus says here. Matthew chapter 10, verse 24. He said, the disciple is not above his master nor the servant above his Lord. Wow. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. Now, now, this is King Jesus talking here. I'm in Matthew chapter 10, verse 24. But there's a mystery to why he's saying this like this. If you remember in Deuteronomy, it says that you'll be above and not beneath. It was talking about the blessing. You'll be the head, not the tail. You'll be above and not beneath. So when we deal with the above place, it is a blessing. So it's an empowerment from God. Now look at this. I'm about to bring everything together. The empowerment in this text is that Jesus is saying that the, 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 sir, the, the disciple is not above his master. But the secret to this is that the disciple is above. The disciple is out of the above realm. The disciple is in the above realm. So the disciple has an empowerment, but the disciple has to be taught of what that empowerment really is. Because when you're in the realm of empowerment, you'll be tempted by other powers. And that's why Apostle Paul came teaching about the realm of principality and powers because the fact that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and Apostle Paul knows that the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you, the Apostle Paul knows that you're going to encounter power. And so other powers will disguise themselves while you're in the realm of power. That's why Apostle Paul talked about how Satan masquerades as an angel of light. So what Satan going to do is come while you're in the realm of power and release his powers, which are his satanic agents, to cause you to misuse the power realm that you have been made and grafted into. So look, oh my gosh, look at this, man. Look at this, man. Look at this. Matthew chapter 10, verse 24, he says, the disciple is not above his master. And so here's what happens. God assigns the master because here's what the master is going to do. The master is going to show you how to use that power effectively and not get demoted with it. The master is going to show you how and why that power was given to you. Why did God give you that power? You didn't just get that power just because God wanted to empower you. He just wanted you to look powerful. No, no, no. There's a purpose to the power. There's a presentation to the power. And that's why Joseph wore a coat of many colors. It's the presentation to power. That's why Jesus had on that garment. The woman touched the hem of his garment, then they cast lots for the garment. It was the presentation of power. The disciple is not above his master. So his master is in the above realm. And his master has 
more experience, more dominion, more wisdom, more access to weapons. The master knows more in the above realm. Now, now look at this. The master and the disciple are both in the above realm. But purposely, God made sure that the master has more. So that the disciple can submit himself to the master. Now, let's go deeper here. It says, and the servant is not above his Lord. The servant is not above his Lord. Now, saints, this is Jesus talking. So Jesus not even talking about himself. <laughs> He's talking about lords. Oh, my God. Listen, imagine this. Jesus is doing a teaching on lords. And he's not talking about himself. <laughs> Saints, Jesus is teaching people about what to do when you discover your Lord. What mentality to have when you discover your master. He's showing you the secrets of how you should think, how you should operate so that other lords and masters that come from Satan's kingdom won't trick you. Because if you remember, Jesus said you can't serve God and mammon. Let me tell you, sir, that mammon is not only the spirit of money, uh, uh, the spirit of love for money, but the spirit of mammon is this. It's actually a demon called mammon. And this demon does everything to make you do people wrong for money, rob God with your money, um, Ignore instructions from God about your money. Spend wrong with money. Keep money out of the kingdom. Keep money out of the work of God. Keep money out of the spirit of the Lord, guiding it and directing it. And so the spirit of mammon is actually a demon spirit that talks to you when money is in your hands. Or when money is about to get in your hands. Or to keep money from that God wants to get to you from ever getting in your hands. Don't worry, I'm not working a teleprompter. I got a um, I got an air thing in here. <laughs> I got an air thing. This top room, you know, is hot. So I got like a I got like um, when I say it's hot, I mean like Texas getting hot. And so I do that so because I don't want to, I don't want to, um, try to moderate it where I don't have too much noise. Plus, I don't want too much noise in the broadcast. You know what's crazy? I've been doing this for years, so there's a lot of stuff that I observe. And it don't got nothing to do with y'all. It just got everything to do with me. It's just mentality, just the perfectionist in me. I was watching Michael the other day when, when he was skin and bones. When Michael was getting it with the skin and bones. He wasn't even getting stopped. And he just was getting it, boy. And they were working, Michael. Michael Jackson had a gift from God. He had a gift from God. And that, listen to what I say. He had a gift. Right? Oh, so you tell me that Michael went to heaven? <sighs> so... The Lord is saying your master has some above knowledges that you don't have as an above disciple. 
Your master has some above weapons that you don't have as an above disciple. Your master has some above experiences with God that you don't have as an above disciple. And watch this. Your Lord has some above wisdom about servanthood that you don't have as a servant. Oh, I just heard the spirit of God just say this. Your master has some above wisdom about discipleship that you don't have, even though you're a disciple. See, see, <coughs> Jesus is teaching Peter, James and John about how to carry the mysteries of God. But he knows more about carrying mysteries than them, even though they're carrying mysteries. So watch this. He, he reveals Elijah to them on the mountain, right? And Moses. And then watch what he does. He tells them, don't reveal this to anybody until after. Don't reveal this to anybody until after. So that advice is showing I know something about mysteries that you need to add to what you know. I'm going to show you something about mysteries that you didn't know before, but you're going to need this so that when the, when, 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 when the mystery is revealed to you, that you won't damage the purpose or damage the atmosphere or damage the reason why God trusted you to know it. So that you can stay in the fear of God with the secret. Remember the secret of the Lord is with those that fear him. So what King Jesus is telling them something that they didn't know. Watch this. Peter would have went to Bartholomew and said, listen, Bartholomew, do you know Jesus took us up on the mountain and showed us our, our, our Elijah, and, Elijah and Moses? Do you know that I saw Moses and Moses was eating a taco. He was eating a taco. He had some burritos and, 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 and he had on a Cuban hat and he was just up there talking to him. Hey, Macarena. Do you know Elijah was up there with the Jamaicans listening to Bob Marley talking to him. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And all of the business would have been revealed and God didn't want the business revealed. Think about that. So the Lord has to add on what is required as a mystery carrier. That this mystery has a time frame to it. You, you, you may not supposed to give this mystery out to anybody. It, it probably just for you. Um, and even if you're going to give it out, this is the time frame in which you're supposed to give it. So if you give it out any time before you betraying the anointing you betraying the father hallelujah so the lord is teaching things about servanthood that the servant don't know and the master is teaching things about discipleship that the disciple don't know so here's the key to all of this the pursuit for what is in the vessel that God sent to you. Did you catch what I just said? The pursuit. Here's the wisdom in all of this. The pursuit. For what is inside of the vessel that God sent to you. You have something in you for me. That if, if I'm going to get it, I have to pursue you. Now, saints, the woman, the, the queen of Sheba was on earth for years, long years. That woman was independent for years. And I'm going to show you this. She didn't have a husband for a reason. You know why? Because it wasn't that she was an ugly woman. God was, oh my God. God she wasn't married for, there was a re, it wasn't that she was a, 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 a funky woman, an ugly woman, <laughs> a funky woman, an ugly woman. Um, she, it wasn't that she had halitosis, it wasn't that she was had bald spots, it, it wasn't that she had one arm, one leg, it wasn't that, that um, she didn't know what Niagara Falls 
seem like it wasn't none of that stuff. It was because God willfully was blocking out the paint so that she can rebound and find King Solomon. Huh? He was blocking out the paint. So, 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 so when, when other kings went, go talk to her, they went, go talk to her. She went out on dates, you know, she come a but then it just fell through. There, there, there was people. She, she had mail service that said, "Come here, come here, man. Come here, let me just, let me just, let me just get one night with the, one night, one night with the queen." It was, it wasn't that, but God was blocking her out. Her old boyfriend came to her. Come on, to her, come on, baby. You know you want, you know you want just a little, just a little, just a little thing, thing. Come on, come on. You know how we used to do it, but she couldn't do it. She had to. He was blocking her out. You know you want Vienna Sasha, you know you want spawn this. Come on, the Bible said little is great when God is in it. That's what And God was just blocking out. Little is much. When God is in it, when God, God, you know the scripture, right? You went to church. I went to church last week. And God was just blocking out. Block him. Block him. Check him. Check. Checkpoint, TSA. It was because Solomon was going to occupy a place of giving to her something that nobody had. Saints, guess what? At the end of your life, when you stand before Jesus and I stand before God, you're going to find out that a lot of conversations you had a lot of things that you did, it didn't avail to nothing. It didn't get you no points in heaven. It wasn't God's will. It wasn't even in his plan. You was over there by that house and God didn't even send you. You was on that phone call and God didn't even pitch you there. The stuff that you did was not God's purpose and it didn't avail to anything. Only what's done for Christ will last for all eternity. And every other fruit decision Every behavior, conduct, conversation, every creation will be burned in the fire if it's not God's will. The Queen of Sheba realized that. What am I doing? This lady rich, but she's saying, what am I doing? I don't even know. I don't even know why I'm here. I'm going to say this, and if you're taking us, write this down. Wisdom can give you money, but money can't give you wisdom. Because see, money is a thing. You need God through wisdom to give you authority over the thing. The thing can't give you authority. M wisdom can Make you rich. But riches can't make your wisdom. So the queen of Sheba is saying, what am I doing here? Because the confusion is to show her Solomon is the location where my clarity hides. Solomon is the location where my anointing is. So she leaves her kingdom to go follow Solomon's kingdom. She leaves her following to go follow Solomon's following. She leaves her connections to go follow Solomon. And her whole life entered into heaven. The money didn't bring it. The fame didn't bring it. All the things didn't bring it. It's my Adam in the earth. Who did I come from? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Who did I come from? The 
The first Adam gave life, the second Adam, uh, the first Adam received life, the second Adam gave life. So we see the Adamic connection is an individual that receives life from God. And gives the life of God. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We see that the Adam in itself, your personal Adam, your Adam connection is a receiver of God and a releaser of God. And your whole life that matters spring forth from your Adam, your life that matters. You're going to live a life whether you want God's will or not. But the life that's going to matter to God, that he's going to accreditate you and commend you and praise you and reward you and bless you and give you eternal life on. It's not the life that you live. It's the life that he predestined before you was in your mother's womb. And once you're in that life. You got to remember the laws. Matthew 10, 24, the disciple is not above his master, nor is the servant above his Lord. These are laws. It's God saying, keep that humility. Keep that hunger. And receive why I put the master there. Because they know things about your discipleship that you don't know. And know why I put your Lord there. Because they know things about your servanthood that you don't know as a servant. He gave you the wisdom, the secret.